I just have some kids hanging off my head or something. Oh, yeah, you were, you were, you were on it on the video. <laughs> yeah, how you doing, man? Doing well. We met back in D.C. once. Oh, did we? Yeah, at the uh, the Back the Blue rally that you did when Trump got out of the hospital. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, for that. Oh, the first, yeah, yeah, the first, first thing. public appearance he had? Yeah, the first public appearance, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So we met there. And I'm the gentleman uh, that Bryson Gray was talking about that talked him into doing Let's Go Brandon. Oh really? Yeah, really. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm in the loop with you. I'm, I'm there with you. <laughs> cool, man. I, I appreciate you coming back here. And, you know, For sure. I'm yeah, whatever you need. Hometown, man. hometown, man. Oh, this your hometown. Oh here? yeah, unfortunately. Uh, man, that's. A, I had the experience. <laughs> say it. Go ahead and say it. It was a little different than where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little more liberal here. Yeah, just a little bit. Just to say the least. Where you from? You, you, where you at? I, I'm in Arizona now. Okay. I was born and raised in Texas. Yep. Those are both of those spots are pretty conservative. Texas has turned purple, though. I don't know, man. You don't know? I don't know. A little bit? 600,000. I think Trump won by like 600,000 votes. And you know they still, you know, doing rigging and doing all the other I know. stuff. So, I, you know, I, I would imagine that Texas is still good. There's a couple of liberals that move in. But right, right. People are changing. I'm hoping that Arizona will stay red. I think Arizona will stay red. I think Arizona. Is yeah, we trying to we trying to make sure it stay red because uh, I don't want nothing to do with these progressive policies that literally destroy the country. So they do, they do. You know, and it's good that you know there's people like yourself, me, you know, Bryson. Obviously, you know, we're moving in the industry, we're moving, you know, in the political realm, trying to wake these folks up. Yeah, hundred percent. You know. So what do you think, let me ask you this, what's the key to getting these conservatives and Republicans to reach out to the black community? It seems like that's a problem, like they don't know how to reach them. Yeah, I think it's two things. I think they don't know how, in some cases, and they don't want to, right. it's a waste of time. Because when you have some case, I mean, for them, I'm not, I don't I don't believe it's a waste of time, but for them, when you're spending money on the campaign, and you say, look, I go into the inner city, and I'm gonna get 2%, maybe get less than that, why would I spend my money in that area when I spend money in other areas? So I see why they are apprehensive to go into some of these communities. And, and a lot of times, some of them aren't, don't, they're not welcome. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> these churches, these inner city churches, not going to have a white Republican come speak, in many cases. Uh, some will. But I see why they, they feel the way they do. But I think it's important for us to continue to speak about the need to communicate with everybody to use some level of resources to, to reach inner city communities mm -hmm. or black communities because black people, generally speaking, are more uh, conservative. Right, and traditionally. If, and if the Republican Party or conservatives can reach them with a message that's applicable to the circumstance that they're in, mm -hmm. I think that we'll see a, a change. So um, I guess that's the thing, how do they do that? Because yeah, it seems like they don't know what to do, that's what it seems like. And it's not, it's not and you know what, it's not, weird that they don't know what to do because it's a different environment, it's a different culture. And some people, they're not accepted in a lot of these areas. I'm not accepted in a lot of these areas. You know what I'm saying? Like, in some of these black areas, they don't want to hear me talk. Right, I know. I, know. I went to Rider University in New Jersey, uh, not New, New York. New York, New Jersey, yeah, New York, New Jersey. I think that's what it's at. So I went there at Rider University and it was supposed to be 50 people there. Right. 450 people showed up. 400 of them were activists from the Black Student Union that showed up to protest me. Against I said, it. I said white privilege is a myth. And they booed me and all this old crazy stuff. So it's a struggle, man. But I, I, I think that any politician that wants to be elected anywhere needs to reach out to every part of every community that they're running in. If you're running for, you know, Congress, whatever your, right. whatever your constituency is, you should you should hit all of those areas the best you can. It's, it's, it's hard, man. Yeah. I wish I had a Because, man. I mean, you get the same thing I get. You know, yeah. Coon, Uncle Tom, yeah. everything. Just bigger. imagine if you were, you're not white. <laughs> I know. I mean, we get on both sides. We get it from the white folks and the black folks. But if you and I are white, they would easily be able to say, oh, no, you're a white supremacist. Right. You're a white supremacist. You're a racist. Right. Your rhetoric is racist. Like, you can say something that you feel like would benefit the black community. And if you were white, you can't say that because they'll they'll view that as a racial racial remark. They do that up to me up here right. though, I, already. Right. I'm already a bigot, racist, so, white supremacist. Right, so I get I get how there's some adversity um, with white candidates within the Republican Party trying to reach the inner city. Right. But, you know, overall, I think that what's gonna have to happen for us to reach minority communities, we're gonna have to have minorities running for office. 
that's pretty much what's gonna have to happen. Because when I was a cop, it was the same way. You know, my I'd be on a call and there'd be some black people that I'm dealing with, and they want to talk to me because I, I look like them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm black, they feel like we're we we're like connected. Yeah. They can relate. So in order for us to really make moves in some of these communities, we have to have people who are from the community represent the community. Right. And when you when you have a black conservative versus a black Republican, I mean a, a black Democrat mm -hmm. or whatever it case may be, a black liberal, right. you have them two facing off in a congressional seat or you know local politics, and you have a chance to debate. People will have a, I think they will have a more balanced perspective because both people are black. Right. What do you really say when you? You know, have to deal with the fact that you have two black people. You can't say one person is racist, one person don't know where. You know, they they not representative of the black voice. You got two black people debating real issues. I think that'll be the best way into diversifying the Republican ticket. I see that as well, and I get that point. With that though, with what's happened with media, obviously music and the whole LGBTQ movement, we've seen what's happened to our our community, the black community, the black community, and so they're bought into that. Especially with the media saying, oh, that's love, all tolerance, tolerance, tolerance. You know, the black folks now are like, they're on that bandwagon. You know, I, I, you know, I, I used to believe that sentiment at 100%, but mm -hmm. now I'm like 60%. I think most black people still don't support that mess. Okay. I think what happens is these people who are propping themselves up as leaders, right. who are leading some aspects mm -hmm. of the black community, some of these pastors, yep. they are the ones pushing it, but the people are in the middle like, you know, my pastor said it's right, you know, I don't know if it's right or wrong. My father's a perfect example. My dad is, you know, he voted for Biden, you know, he, he you know, he, he, he's, he's he waking up to him. it, but he don't, he don't fool with the LGBTQ stuff. Right. You know, my dad don't care. He's he not going to beat me to anybody, but he don't like them pushing the agenda. He told me he left the, he left the, uh, NAACP in his area because they were pushing the LGBTQ stuff. They're pushing it. Not not saying that we love everybody like Christ would. They put they're pushing it. They are right. they being paid to do it. Right. I think some of these people are, are being paid or leveraged. Mm -hmm. I saw one of my favorite pastors, um, William Murphy. Um, William Murphy Jr. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's a singer or pastor or he's incredible full gospel with Bishop Paul Paul Morton and that whole group. Tasha Cobbs came from that group. I don't know if you're in the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tasha Cobbs, yeah. Yeah, so Tasha Cobbs, he, she came from uh, William Murphy's church. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so she was the she was a praise worship team leader at his church, and then she moved on to start on stuff. He's such a spiritually gifted person. I mean, the guy literally had me crying, and I, I worship to all his music. Right. But he is on there pushing vaccines and stuff like that, and it's like... Maybe they donate to his church or something. I don't know what to right. make a person feel that they should compromise their faith in Christ mm -hmm. to to push a political agenda. So I, I know a lot of churches are selling out to it though. They're selling out big time. Yeah, man. they don't even lose members. I mean, right. the CDC said so. They didn't even got to go with it. <laughs> they can't. It's a, you know for some of these churches, it's about faith. It's about bottom line. Yeah. yeah. Are the butts in the seats? Are they yeah. paying tithes and offerings? That's what it's about. And if they if you lose. They don't want to risk losing that yeah. people because jeopardizing the truth. Right. They they don't care. I mean, I don't I don't know their heart, but I know a lot of them don't care. Right. Mr. Paul Moore and he blocked me. I mean I, Yeah, he's my favorite he's my favorite gospel artist. He's my favorite one of my favorite preachers. He blocked me because he's pushing the LGBTQ and abor abortion and I'm like, what? It just don't make sense. That's not that's not biblical. That don't that's even like, even outside of the Bible, it just don't make any sense. <laughs> Common sense, right? It's not it's not realistic, right? You know? Right. It's whack. It's not it's not what, what Christ would want us to be involved with. There's no Christian on planet Earth should be promoting abortions. That's not the message of Christ right. at all. It don't mean you gotta get out there and beat a girl up, you know, and be cussing them out and yelling at them at the abortion clinic. But we should not support it. We should give guidance and help them. Uh, like it was a young Detour lady. A young right? lady came to us. She chose life, and uh, she was afraid to give her baby up at the last minute. We said, "Look, if you want to keep your baby, we'll help you. We'll help with childcare. That's what we should be doing. We should, instead of beating these women up and making them feel terrible, we should say, no, if you choose life, I'm going to help you, yeah. or I'm going to send you to a program that will help you every step of the way, and I'll make sure you finish right." Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, because it's a lot of sometimes a lot of fear and so many things is going through his mind with that stuff. One hundred percent. You have a baby with a loser, or you know, yeah. messing around like many. We we you know, yeah. 
I was born yesterday, but I want I was born during the day, but not yesterday. <laughs> you know, and you, you get around, you, yeah. you, know, you fall yeah. in love with somebody, you think that somebody play you, and yeah. you get pregnant, and you ain't got no job. Your parents, out. your parents are telling you have an abortion. You are stupid for keeping that baby. I mean, so many women get pressured like that, mm -hmm. and they're they're misinformed about what's really going to happen when you go into the abortion clinic. Right. And so they they're going there. Some of them lost. Some of them misguided, and they go and have an abortion. Yeah. And and if you get up there and say you're you're evil, you're going to hell. You know that's going to just push them further away. You know that's that's my thing. I mean I'm. I, 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 a thousand topics I can jump on, but that's one of the things that I feel like that the churches should be more conscious of and involved in. Right. It's staying true to the mission. You know, you can still love people and criticize them. You can still yeah. love people and hold the standard. You know, my pastor loved me. When I had a kid out of wedlock, he he chastised me. See, but that's the thing, they don't want to do that anymore. Right. 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 There is so there is a way. There is a balance, like you're saying. Yeah. Balance. He loved you know, me. I know he loved me. He had to do what he had to do. Right. I shouldn't have been messing around without being married. Right, right. And, you know, he was accepting. And, you know, of course, I had to sit out the choir and I, and I deserved it. He was on the bench, huh? I had to sit on the bench. <laughs> I had to sit down. That's what they call it in the beholding this church. You had to sit down. <laughs> and I deserved it. Right. I shamed Christ. I shamed the church because of a decision that I made. It's not to say I was condemned. Right. I can get back in the choir after a while, but I had to sit down. It had to be an example of this is not the way you do things in the in, in, the, in the house of God. We don't have that anymore, though. No, yeah. Right, it's missing. They, no. they, look, man, <laughs> they believe in Fauci more than they believe in Christ. Yep. They, yep. they, I don't know, BBC, no, I don't care what this is. I mean, there is a point of wisdom. Mm -hmm. If you are, you know, if you have comorbidities or you're elderly, maybe you could take some precautions. Right. But my God, you're going to shut the church down? <laughs> They don't, people don't have access to Christ. You're supposed right. to be the shepherd, the man of God, yeah. to lead the Fellowship flock. with the brethren, assembly. And you dismiss that because of mm -hmm. what somebody said, not what the Bible prescribes. I mean, what have happened to humans? They up there all day long. Come in the prayer line and they, they everybody healed today. Right. COVID come. They lost they their power. They don't know how to heal nobody, right? Because Christ can't work no more because COVID did. It's, 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 and then you know who fake and who real, right? Right. Anybody right. can say, "Oh, you healed. Right. You healed in the name of Jesus. You healed." And these these healings that nobody can see. Right. There's no evidence. There's of no it. evidence. They can make it up. Or it's there for like a day or right. something. Right. right. And then gone. Like I thought oh, the pain is gone from my knee. Right. And there's stuff you can't see. Right. But COVID, you can see. You can feel it. You test positive. You right. sit. You feel it. Right. What happened to the healing in that circumstance? Yeah. But we all know that yeah. it's a business. Churches become a business. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I own a business and I, I'm, I'm part of multiple nonprofits. Right. I say, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I see, how, like, I see, this I see how we fundraise. <laughs> and I say, oh, they doing the, the same, same thing. thing. What about those donations? Right. Right. Oh. They're running ads on Facebook. Right. <laughs> God, God said, I went to the church. God <laughs> said 55 people to give $500. God you didn't say, say that. that. This is a fundraiser. <laughs> You're raising money to pay speaking fees. Yeah. Yep. Oh, God didn't say that right. God ain't had nothing to do with 55 <laughs> people. In, and then you know when 55 people don't get up, they right. start breaking the man down. Right. God, no, God said that's 20, 20 right. Listen to God. 250. <laughs> Wait a minute. They, they doing, they, they bidding. 150 people. $50. You like, God said 500. How did he get the $50? $50. And and God, really, God really said that. It didn't change. They people are fraudulent, <laughs> and they gonna pay for it. Yeah, I hope they do, especially the ones who are doing it intentionally. Yeah, there's a difference between being misled. You know, right. you go to a church and you're on this. Yeah, and you yeah. just really believe the pastor telling you the truth, and so you go through the process. But people who are going to bed at night, being like, "Yeah, I gotta make this money on these people," and they're struggling, right? And they're going to church, giving their last dime. Believing that God is going to answer prayer, which I think God still will for them, yeah. because it's about the faith that they have. Right. These crooks do something with their money, and then God will to handle them. Mm -hmm. But they play off of that because I think people do get miracles by giving to some of these people who are evil. Right. Because God see the faith that they have that and they bless have. them. That's, good. That's a good point. And yeah. they get the blessings, and then the people, the crooks, report back. Look at this woman who was healed. Right. She gave this offering. So it looks like right. It's like no, no, no. That God saw her heart, and she gave in good right. faith. That believing that you would do something, right. and God answered her prayer as her individual as her own faith. Right. Her own faith. Yeah. Her own. You know. Yeah. That's good. God.
And but these crooks, they they say, oh, see, you're healing people. It's like, oh, man, you gonna go to hell? They, you know, I would never say because I don't know where they're going to be honest, but. You 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 could be on hey, your way. Scripture does talk about judging the fruit by its you know tree. Right, by fruit, right, so. right. Yeah, yeah, right. But I can't say a person like, right here. Yeah, but I, I can tell you what. As far as in result, right? Yeah, you're doing yeah. something wrong here. Yeah, you're going against. Them. Right now, evidence is showing. Someone that your fruit your tree did. <laughs> that tree is ready to crack we're off. Gonna right? Cut that tree down and <laughs> throw it in the fire. They're gonna start in a couple minutes. Are they? Do you think we'll have an honest election again? No, I mean, no, I don't think the election has ever been honest. I mean, you know, yeah. it's just that this it one was more, exposed, right? This one got more exposed because they went extra hard. Yeah. Right. I think elections in the past probably were the same. You know, the same, these same laws and the way people vote and ballot harvesting. And, I when mean, we they went probably, mail in voting in Oregon, we went blue, blue and never went back. Yeah, see, I mean, right. I think that they, I think they always are cheating. Even Republicans may have done the same thing. Yeah. Politicians, politicians, I yeah. know. They all trying to get it. I'm sure you've been around some and you've seen I've been dirt. around some of man, and they, yeah. they ain't who you think. You're like, bro, you what you think? <laughs> <laughs> we just got through experience. If I had a hidden camera, bro, you done. <laughs> you really doing this in front of me? <laughs> Talking like this? I mean, it was one one dude running out of running out of California. He went to jail, actually, oh. for a little bit of think, domestic violence or something. I won't say his name. Right. You probably know who he is if you do a little Google search. Yeah. That fool, we were at a, an event. That fool talking about going to gambling and trying to hook up with girls at the thing. And he like, oh, yeah, he, he was I, married I, too. I, he was I, married. I don't know who you're about. I know he was about. married. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting back like I'm so green. I'm right. thinking everybody's in this right. for the right reason. <laughs> right. We all trying to save America. And I'm like, <laughs> And then I start to realize once success happened, there's a lot of people that hate on you. Right. Like Candace and I, people hate on us. They just go out their way to like say, say so. lie. Yeah. You, gri- you, gr- you grifted on the white grip. <laughs> yes, that's the best one. You can't win for losing. If you if you right. you can't be liked by white people because that's bad. White right. people can't not like you because that's bad. So yeah. it's like, yeah. what do you want well, me to do? They, you you have nothing like these people are dumb. Like you can't <laughs> fall into the trap they want you to be. Right. You grifted. Well, we all believe in capitalism. Right. So if I start a business and I'm, and my business is successful, we live in a capitalist society. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Or they say you grifting on the white. You can this and I some of us, I don't know, I, I just you know, of course I just met you guys more recently, but Candace and I started when it wasn't popular. Right. Right. We wasn't no, it wasn't no black <laughs> conservative. No <laughs> we were just, you know, we saw Larry Elder and we started yeah. speaking out. People hated us, people loved, we lost a lot of friends. Yep. Yeah before it was ever popular. Right. And then what happened was we got popular and other people said, oh, wow, if I do this, I could be popular. And they didn't come in it with the right reason. They came in it to be popular instead of coming in and saying, wow, you know, I want to wait. It's like, it's like my faith in Christ. When I got mm-hmm. saved, I want everybody to be saved. Yeah, I want mm-hmm. everybody to see the truth. And the same thing happened when I came to serve. I'm like, oh, shoot. Right. I, how many more people is still believing a lie? Let me go in. Tell as many people as I as I know. You know so. so I know you gotta get going, man. I know you gotta be on. Yeah, no you problem. Have a little long drive. So with this, since I did record it, yeah. is it right if I post it or yeah, should yeah. I chop it up? I usually don't chop things up. Yeah, I'm just post it. Okay, okay. okay. So other thing is, um, let me give you this. I know I've tried to reach out to you several times, but so you have it. I do live stream. I'm everywhere live streaming. So you can reach out to my. Um, Cause you know I'm I'm really busy, but my people I know. make sure. So I I'm saying it. like footage, like yeah. things. I was just I just got back from the convoy. Oh really? Yeah, up in DC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they're doing. I just got back from there, so I'm constantly in and out going to places, live streaming events, political stuff. So if I if you want any footage, I know you use probably sometimes Andy No who lives well he's from here. You know, oh yeah, yeah, I heard him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I live stream. So if there's any other footage you guys want, you know, some way I can get you. Some are, we, footage. are we following each other on IG? Um, you you on IG, right? Yep, yeah, I'm on IG. Yeah, I have all that stuff on the back of the car. I'm trying to find right now so I can follow because if you want to leave here, I won't forget. Yeah. What's your IG? Mm-hmm. The BC preacher. DC BC like black conservative. Right here. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Follow you back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, feel free. So, like, if you have some cool stuff, just send it. Just send it to me. Like, like, yeah, I know you do your stuff, your clips, and you know, talk about highlighting things. So, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll check you out. If you got stuff, you know, send it to me. Inbox me, and then I'll see it. Okay. And then uh, you know, if I if I if it's something that I'm like, right, I can make a video about. I can use it. I'm crazy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm crazy.
appreciate it, man. Well, should I, how should I do that? Through IG or how? Yeah, yeah just send just IG. Just okay. like if you if you do something, just share it. With share with it. Okay. And then, and I'll see it in the inbox and I'll look at it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm like uh, yeah. I see you in the video with these guys. I forget his name. Will. 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 So we do a show. Will Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Right. We do a show every every oh, night. Oh, really? I yeah, love all four of us. I met Will. A long time ago when it yeah. first started, he probably think I don't like him. I just I've been so busy, man. I, yeah. yeah, that's what happens. I, but I, if I, you I, talk to him, tell him, man, I love him, man. He's still my, okay, he's still I my dude, man. I told him tonight, like I can't do the show tonight. I'm going to see BT. So oh, cool, cool. So. Yeah, he he a good dude, man. Well, yeah. I, I love him, man. Yeah. He's got a great heart. Yep. Uh, I remember I forget the other guy name. I thought they were the same person one time. Will and the other oh, guy with uh, the freckles. Uh, uh, Mo, D Mo. Mo. Yeah, Mo. Yeah. 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 I thought they. I mean, when I when we first started, I was like, I called. Uh, you trying to call Mo Will? Mo Will, and I'm like, <laughs> y'all ain't the same. And I'm like, well, one of them got freckles, right, one of them don't, but they, they look very similar. <laughs> yeah, I think Mo just recently cut it off. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, he recently cut it off. That was his thing. Did he have him in Kenosha? He had them. Um, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He, he didn't, didn't have them in Kenosha. Kenosha. No, yeah, well, During the Kyle trial. trial. Kenosha. I was uh -huh. there too. Oh, wow. So. Are you recording there? Yep. Yeah, it's cool. So, great. I mean, that's the thing. The media is not going to show it. So, not. We, not. Need, you know, we need conservative live streamers out there. I've been in the riots here in Portland down there doing all that stuff. Are you guys both live here? Yeah. Born and raised. Oh, okay. We've watched yes, the Yes, you were. The video yeah. that I did of you were the baby, here in The baby yeah. mama thing. The antique. I just rolled out of bed. She was. She was on that. I was like. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He was out of town. That was so unplanned. He was out of town and called me and was like, you should be at this thing. And I'm like, I don't, I just like, I'm just getting up. And I grabbed the kids, jump in the car. And well, some of the kids <laughs> grabbed, jump in the car. And then I had no plan. That just happened. Yeah, that's awesome. I was in Cali. Street but see, we've been awesome. targeted by Antifa since long before they were cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they've been just trying to destroy our family for years. So... I was angry for many, many years. That was hey, a lot of stuff coming personally, out. Personally, yes, personally. I've been red pills before. I voted for Trump the first time. Oh. So they've been on me for five years. I was at Berkeley. I've been in this, you know, this really, really. I've been in They were downtown the night Trump was well, voted into time. office and came back bloody with broken equipment yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Who are you? You and Will now? Or Not Will. You? No, Will don't live here. Me and some other fellas. That, yeah, Will in California. Yeah, right? no, he's, in, he's in Texas now. Oh, you know in Texas? Yeah, but, yeah I've, been, I've been in this stuff. Man, so Trump. You, we we I, you know yeah you, if, you know, my story I joined I mean I, I went to Trump's first rally well not the first rally but the rally he did in Arizona right and then I was on the Trump train I had it ever since yep yep but you know I just I was never into politics though really you know growing up I wasn't right. we're doing other things I was doing other things I mean I was yeah. and, and politics wasn't like it is yeah, now. it wasn't it, it wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. a it wasn't a thing <laughs> you're like oh they're the same people they yeah. vote in. We didn't even vote. When I grew up, my dad never, never told me about voting. I don't even know if my dad ever voted. Wow. I have no idea. Nobody voted. That's crazy. Where I'm from, I mean, I just don't think anybody voted. Right. Or they did, and they just didn't say anything. It wasn't a deal. You're just a Democrat if you did vote. Right. You know, there was no political conversation in my family. I want to thank God that God put me in this position because I talked mm -hmm. to my son about it. And mm -hmm. he, his mom lived in Seattle. We just came from Seattle. We drove from Seattle. Oh, okay. I heard off. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. It was crazy, man. They, 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 it was the <laughs> airline. It, yeah, he was no, with me. He been with me for the whole time. We flew yesterday. We flew for twenty four hours straight because we went to. We woke up at well, we left Orlando at like four a.m. Yeah. to get to the airport to get to DFW. We supposed to connect to come to uh, Portland. Well, the flight was delayed in uh, Orlando, and so we missed the flight in DFW. And they say there's no more flights to Portland at all until the next day. Target no, day. no. No more till like Tuesday. Wow. And so we like, oh, bro, we gotta get there. I mean, what do you mean? Right. Fly somewhere close, you know, Eugene or anything? And so they said, they, they, the girl was literally on the computer and she refreshed it and these two flights popped up. Oh, and she booked us on us to Seattle. And so we ended up having to stay in Dallas for like seven or eight hours waiting on our flight to start. Then we jumped oh, on a flight, man. got here, at like got to Seattle at midnight. And then we uh, slept, woke up. I went to see my son at his school just real quick, and we drove through here. So we've been traveling like crazy. Yeah. And I've been gone because I was just in Orlando doing the thing for three or four days. Mm -hmm. yeah, so three, four days. That's the life. Yes, yeah, so I'm here to go see my wife and go back home. Like I'm tapped. <laughs> I'm tapped. I'm, yeah. Sorry. You but got one out of here though. Hopefully, the flight did you get where? Yeah, you're tomorrow going? morning. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna get delayed, but like. Flights out of Portland are pretty cool. Now we've said that in front of me, but he flies out here all the time. I usually do red eye, especially yeah. going east. Oh yeah, so it's empty. Mm -hmm. 
But depending on the time of day, we guys go. Perfect. So, we're good meeting you, brother. Honestly, you too, brother. Appreciate it. Nice What's to meet name? you. I'm Nick. Your name is Jamie. 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 Yeah. I like that, man. What you're doing on the little set. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Getting the footage. Yeah. yeah. I do my best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're fine with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. you do a great job. Yeah, that's, that's good. Great job. That's why you're here. Yep, yep. Cool, man. Looking forward to it. I'll live stream the event. I'll probably come up later with another question when you're talking to folks. Yeah, for sure. Whatever you need, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir.